the village elders decided that Uloma and her daughter should be banished. Omofia and the banished widow. Once upon a time, in an African village of Omofia, lived a happy family. Uloma, a kind-hearted woman, her husband Obiora was a strong and loving man. They had a little daughter named Uju. Uju was just a toddler. The family lived in a small cozy hut near the edge of the river. Every evening, they would sit outside and watch the stars together. One day, tragedy struck. Obiora fell ill suddenly and despite all efforts to save him, he passed away. The village was filled with sorrow and Uloma was so heartbroken. She cried every night, holding little Ujo to her heart. The villagers, however, began to rumor. They wondered if Uloma had something to do with Obiora's death. The rumor turned into accusation and soon, everyone believed that Uloma was guilty. The village elders decided that Uloma and her daughter should be banished. They called a meeting in the village square, where everyone gathered. The head elder, Mazi Okonkwa, stood up and spoke in a loud voice. Uloma, he said. You have been accused of causing your husband's death. As punishment, you and your daughter, Uju, are hereby banished from the land. Uloma was heartbroken. She wondered why the villagers would think of her in such manner. Why would they think I killed my husband? Why? She cried. She held her daughter tightly and walked out of the village with tears streaming down her face. The villagers watched in silence, some feeling pity but most believing she deserved her fate. Having nowhere to go, Oloma and Ojo wandered into the forest, unsure of what it entails. They had no home, no food, no friends. The forest was dark and full of strange noises. But Uloma was determined to protect her daughter. They found a small clearing and decided to rest there for the night. Days turned into weeks and Uloma struggled to find food for them. She gathered the fruits and the herbs she could gather and they began to eat out of it. Sometimes they were lucky to have fish because they learned how to fish from the husband. Uloma knew she had to be strong for her daughter. One day, as they were wandering deeper into the forest, they came across an old woman called Neka. She lived alone in a little hut made of wood and leaves. Neka saw the tired and hungry Uloma and Uju and invited them to her house. You can stay with me, Neka said kindly. I have enough food and space for both of you. Just feel at home even though it's a small hut. Uloma was overwhelmed with gratitude. She and her daughter stayed with Neka and slowly their lives began to improve. Neka taught Uloma how to find food in the forest and how to make medicines from the plants and the herbs. Uloma learned quickly and became a great healer. Ujutsu grew and learned from both her mother and Neka. She was a bright and curious child, also eager to help and learn new things. After many years, Uju grew into a beautiful young girl. She had a special gift of healing. 
she could look at a plant and know exactly what it could be used for. Her touch was gentle and her heart was kind. People from nearby villages heard about the great healer and began to visit Neka's hut for help. One day, a young man came running to their hut. He was out of breath and looked quite terrified. Please, he begged, our kid is very sick. We have heard of a great healer in this forest. Will you come and help him? Please, our king is dying. Help, help our king. Oloma and Oju looked at each other. They knew that this was their chance to help and to show the world that they were not as evil as accused. So, they decided to help the said king. Uloma and Uju packed their healing herbs and followed the boy to his village. They walked for hours and as they got closer, Uloma realized that they were heading back to Omofia. Her heart pounded with mixed feeling. She had not been back to the village since they were banished. When they arrived, the villagers were shocked to see them. The murmurs began again, but this time, they were different. People were curious, but all they wanted was for their king to be saved. Uju stepped forward. She felt no fear, only determination. She examined the king and whispered to her mother, Mother, we need the special heads from the forest. The wolf's neck had taught us about. Loma nodded and quickly prepared the herbs. She mixed them into a portion and carefully fed it to the king. Then, she and Uju stayed by his side, tending to him day and night. After several days, the king's condition began to improve. His color returned and his breathing became steady. The villagers watching in shock as he slowly sat up and smiled. Thank you, the king said, his voice weak but full of gratitude. You have saved my life. I am so grateful to you both. We were wrong to accuse you, Uloma, he said. You and your daughter have shown us what true kindness and love meant. Please forgive us and return to our village. Uloma and her daughter had to forgive the villagers and returned to Umofia. They were welcomed with open arms and the people built a new hut for them because the previous was destroyed out of anger. Uloma continued to heal the sick and Doju became the greatest healer in the land. Do you know that Namibia, a country in southwestern coast of Africa, has some of the best fishing spots in the world thanks to the Benguela current. There are many kinds of fish in Namibia, like tiger fish, tilapia, catfish, and yellow fish. The most important fish for Namibia's fishing industry is hake. In 2022, Namibia sold fish and fish products worth several hundred and sixty million dollars thanks for watching love from the classic stories